Hey, how's it going? We are a big fan of view transitions. That's the view transitions API to be specific. And the idea is it can add these really smooth transitions or animations to your pages as you navigate through them. Here I've added a lot of delay to it. I've kept this duration at two seconds just to really pronounce the effects of it. And you, you can see that's how it works with very few lines of CSS. And what I'd like to do in this video is take you through a few different examples so you can get a feel for some of the techniques and mechanisms that you can use to add view transitions to your own website. And yeah, that's pretty much it. As for the code, it's literally these three lines of CSS at view transitions, navigation auto. Maybe you have a suspicion as to what old and new are. That is the old page and then the new page. And here I'm targeting them both and I'm specifying root because that is the root element. And we'll talk more about that later as to what you can actually pass to that. But I'm giving it an animation duration of two seconds. And if you're like, what is that property? Isn't that for CSS animations? Yes, it is because it turns out that view transitions is pretty much built upon a lot of the existing web platform technologies that we already know. Let's move on to the next example. So previously we were doing a crossfade transition between page navigations. Yeah, that's good. That's fine. In some cases it's miles better than what websites might look like by default as you navigate through them. And here I've got this kind of slide in and slide out effect which is questionable because as I go back, it still slides in from the wrong direction, but whatever. This is possible with CSS alone. Let's take a very quick glimpse at the code. We've got the usual at view transition navigation auto, and then we want to start customizing things. And I'm going to take you to this pseudo element selector, this view transition old, which represents the old page. And here I'm chucking this kind of main content argument to this, what appears to be a function. and the contents of that or the styling applied to the old page is that it should slide out and slide out if we scroll down is defined in this css keyframe animation and it is fairly intuitive at least to me but yeah we go from translate x of zero and then we slide it out off the screen and then for the new content you might be able to figure it out at this point we want to slide that in using a keyframe animation it comes from out the screen and in good stuff the one little remark that I wanted to make about main content is that is not a special built-in CSS keyword. That is a name, uh, a unique identifier that I've given um, using the view transition name CSS property. And I've called it main dash content just to, if I called it main, that might sound like it's connected to the HTML element, which it is, but that's it's connected because I've defined it that way. So here we've got a regular CSS selector for the main element, which is, yeah, it's the part that I want sliding in and out and give that a custom identifier of main content. And then the browser knows how to handle that transition. And just to reiterate that is possible with CSS alone. And I would argue that's a pretty decent effect, whether or not you should start sliding everything in and out of your web pages. That's a different question, but I would argue that's a really good thing that we can now do. Let's move on to the next example. In this example, it's pretty much the same as what you've just seen, but now the browser traversal, like using the back and forward arrow buttons in my browser, that's respected. And it does it in a way that's more intuitive. All I really wanted to show you is if we look at the CSS, we've got the usual main selector. I've declared my identifier of main content, but now we've got these new pseudo selectors, this active view transition type. To be honest, it's a bit out of scope of this video to dive into what that means. But what I do want you to pay attention to, and what will make sense in a second is this forward and this backward. Okay, what is forward? What is backwards? Is that something built into CSS or are we maybe defining that in JavaScript once we figure out the correct direction? Enough looking at the CSS, now it's time to dive into the JavaScript. I'm using the new page reveal event listener and that offers you this view transition object where it's available, where it's supported. And the real magic here is how we can use this relatively new nav navigation API. And on that, there's an entry object and that gives you the index so you can figure out where in the stack is the user in that navigation stack. And since you can look at the current item, the entry and where they're coming from, you can actually determine, are they going forward or are they going backwards? The key thing here is to pay attention to line 13. It's the ability to call view transition. So this is something new on the view transition object where you can pass anything you want. I've called it backward and forward, but I don't want you to think that this is something built in. You can give these any names you want and these connect back to the CSS if you write the CSS code to do that. So that forward here that I'm selecting is connected to that forward over here in the JavaScript. Let's move on to the next demo 
here where you can navigate between pages and it's a usual slide in and slide out effect that you've seen. And I believe that the browser navigation is respected as well. First of all, just to expose you to another way of doing things, you can totally define the page order of your navigation because the browser isn't really going to know about the ordering of your navigation. You can define that in JavaScript and you can use that to determine are they going back or are they going forward? And that's what I've done here. We don't need to go into the sort of calculation of how do we determine if that's backwards or forwards. It's really just to expose you to another technique. If you do want to understand the significance of these different page reveal events, and there's also a page swap event, and maybe you want to understand more about why is there an event dot activation in one of them and a navigation dot activation in another, go and read our blog post where we dive into lots of detail about all of this and give you more code examples to play around with. As a little bonus, by the way, these navigations are happening pretty fast. What I want to highlight is the HTML. Because what I did is I added speculation rules, which complements the view transition API very nicely. Don't get me wrong that APIs aren't inherently connected, but when you pre-render pages, which is what I'm doing here with this pre-render key, and then basically immediate is my way of saying, hey, just pre-render as much as you can straight away. The pages that I might be navigating to get pre-rendered. And you can see it's saying in DevTools, calculations initiated by this page, right? So the current blog.html file that I'm on, it has a bunch of speculation rules on it. And DevTools is telling me that speculative load or that pre-rendering has now happened. And if I go to any one of these pages and go to the speculative loads in the DevTools panel, there we go. It didn't look like anything happened, but where it says success under speculative loading status for this page, that basically means that this page was indeed pre-rendered. Moving on to the next example, this is what got me really excited about the view transitions API. If we start navigating from this main blog page, onto the, the dedicated blog post page. So from homepage to the blog post page, you can see we've got all these like really cool element more transitions happening. And look, my scroll bar is like preserved perfectly. So if I scroll all the way to the bottom of the blog homepage, I click on the, the jellyfish title. Yeah, look at that. It just it appears as if it's on the top, which is exactly how the web should be working. And when I hit back, I am still at the bottom of the blog homepage. Really good and probably a bit of a weird thing to get excited about. This is possible with CSS only. Yes, these individual element morphing transitions where the image turns into the bigger image and then the, the preview text turns into the first sentence of the blog post text is there is a catch. The CSS isn't ideal. If we inspect, let's say the title, you have given that specific element a unique identifier of post one title. And now you might be able to string things together. How does the browser know to transition that title into the main title on the next page? It knows because that title also has a unique identifier. And this is where it gets a little messy, unfortunately, because I've just had to define like a ton of CSS selectors. Also, I can give each element that I want to eventually be morphed. Also, I can give those these unique view transition name identifiers. It's not ideal, and we are going to see how to do that in JavaScript in a second. The next example is exactly the same as the previous, but instead of it being CSS, which for the record is literally now just view transition, navigation, auto. So we're just opting in to view transitions, but the magic is all in JavaScript. It's a bit involved and it's out of scope of this video to go into detail about how to figure out what element to morph into what but I'll just leave you with the line of code that does the business. And it's pretty much this. It's the ability to add a view transition name from JavaScript. That's it. How you figure that out, that's the part that's a bit more involved. And I would advise that you read our blog post to learn more. The catch is that you're now having to use JavaScript for something that CSS is perfectly capable of. So who knows, maybe you will see a middle ground coming, but for now, those are the options. For the final demo, I wanted to show you this single page application which really is an SPA. It's not doing a full page reload like all the other demos you've been seeing. So when I navigate here from page one to page two, that's a full page reload. You lose state if you had any state. This, however, as you can see by the video, as I navigate through that video playback state is preserved because this is truly a single page app. And there's a lot to talk about here. It's just doing the usual slide in, slide out effect that you've been seeing. Ooh, that looked a bit weird. Yeah, I haven't been handling my edge cases in any of these demos. There's only two things that I want to show you. First of all, it's the ability to intercept page navigations at the browser level, not at the level where you inspect the DOM and you say, oh, for all these hyperlinks, I want to add event listener of click and then prevent default and do my own thing. No, that feels too hacky nowadays. Now you can use the navigation object to add a navigate 
event listener and using the event object pass to that event listener, you can then call event.intercept and you can pass a handler for how the browser should handle that piece of navigation. And I love that because if you look for the tab loading indicator, if you watch it carefully, as I navigate through these pages, it's actually respecting or it's understanding how long that navigation is taking, which I think is fantastic. So that's one thing to highlight is the ability to intercept page navigations with the navigation API without having to do any hacky like event prevent default stuff. But the next it's if we look at this handle navigation event, we're saying, hey browser, instead of doing a cross document view transition, do a same document view transition. And here's the thing that I want you to, to transition between or animate. It's the execution of this update content function. And the update content function is what replaces parts of the DOM with the results of a fetch API request. So you might see that and feel a little bit underwhelmed because you're thinking, you know what, you're still having to do a lot of that coordination and synchronization of the DOM yourself. And at that point, why not just use a framework? But I would argue this is still miles better than what we had before. The ability to intercept real page navigations and having a browser blessed approach at actually using this technique, I would argue is a really good thing. I'll just do a very brief walkthrough of that. The idea is we set up this navigation handler, we intercept the navigate event, and then we call event.intercept. From there, we are able to do whatever we want in that navigation interception handler. And what I've chosen to do is to use the fetch API to download that next page, to get the textual content, to convert that textual content into a DOM, which is a parser.parse from string of the DOM parser API. Nice little API if you're not aware of it. And then finally, it's to actually replace parts of the DOM. But what's nice is all the usual transitions or animation effects that you know would continue to work, even if it's happening on the same document. And that's why we still get the usual slide in and slide out effects. And I'm able to style that in the usual way. I know that was a lot to skim through and that's not even it. There's still more, but I hope that was enough to give you a peek into what view transitions can offer you and your website. And maybe you consider using it. Go and check out our blog post. Thanks for watching.